All right, this afternoon we're heading up here to Atlanta, Georgia, to the to the airport, and uh, we're gonna pick up two veterans, uh, Luis Rosa and John Bennett, and we're gonna take them on a whitetail deer hunt this weekend. My name is Luis Rosa. I was Army, uh, 11 Bravo Infantry, uh, airborne, and I was wounded in Baghdad, Iraq, in April 21st, 2008, two days before my birthday. Happy birthday to me. My name is John Bennett, Montana Army National Guard. So I was deployed to Iraq. We were in Hawija, uh, Iraq, which is um, up between uh, Kirkuk and Tikrit. Uh, it's kind of a kind of a bad area, um, but you, know, you do your job and hope everything works out. I am going to shoot things. Not today. It is probably a bad idea to shoot things while inside the neighborhood. But I have come here to hunt, and I am extremely excited to hunt. I've never hunted anything with more than two legs. Got invited to come down for a hunt. Uh, we're hunting whitetail. First time I've ever hunted in Georgia, so kind of excited. But uh, the guys say it was the biggest one they saw the entire deployment. And because there's no shrapnel, all I can say is it was EFP and I was probably standing directly in front of it where I was able to just cut off these three. No, I was just a jug. Hmm? 15, 15 pounds of explosives in a plastic jug. No metal. I was wounded in Iraq in 2008 by a roadside bomb, EFP. And immediately amputated my three limbs. Double up of the knee, my left arm just below the elbow. I'm also completely deaf. I hear with a cochlear implant. I'm blind in my left eye. Uh, my face was shattered. Every single bone in my face, pretty much from my eyebrow down to the entire maxilla, coming all the way back, is held together almost entirely by screws and pins and mesh and wire. So, and then on top of that, sprinkle a little TBI, PTSD, you know, kind of normal things, some, some nice little scars. So, it's, it's it, it was quite the adventure. It, I was hit, and I was out. I was out for uh, the next two weeks. Um, told that I coded twice, had to be resuscitated. And I was straight from the way, the way the medical system works is medics work on me. They you know, put on the tourniquets, stop the bleeding, uh, make sure I'm breathing. Then they loaded me onto a Humvee. They rushed me to the local cache. The cache flew me to Baghdad Hospital. Baghdad flew me to Launch School, Germany. And there I stayed maybe three, four more days. They rushed me back to the States to Walter Reed, not because there was better care. I'm, not, I'm actually not sure of that, but the, the reason that they rushed me back is they said, he's not going to make it. Send him back to the States so his parents could say goodbye to him. That was the reason that they sent me back so quick. In fact, when they loaded me on the plane, I was still black with soot from the blast. And infections. Infections threatened to kill me. That's really what threatened to kill me. They could not get a handle on infections. They, all they could tell my parents is that we've done what we can. The rest is on his body. And two weeks after injury, I, I wake up. It was not, it was not a happy moment. I was a very, it was very confusing. I... I was blind when I first woke up. I can see 
light shapes some color. And pretty much I can see the outline of a person. And I can tell when someone was around. And I started to learn very quickly, probably within the first day or two, who was who just by the way they carried themselves or size and shape. I knew when my mother was, was next to me because she's four foot eleven. It's pretty easy to pick her out even when she's just a blob of, of light and color. Uh, and then I couldn't hear. I couldn't hear anything. I, I couldn't make heads or tails of it. I didn't know what was going on. I couldn't see. I couldn't hear. I couldn't move. I couldn't speak. My jaw was wired shut and I was breathing through a, through a trach. And it was an absolute nightmare. And then when I slipped back into my dreams, which were nightmares, I couldn't tell which was real, which one was the dream, which one was real life. Uh, I don't know which one I wanted to be real life, the one where I couldn't move, see, or hear, or the ones where demons were poking at me. I didn't know which one I wanted to be real, and I didn't know which one was real. Slowly but surely, next couple of days, another week or so, I started to really comprehend what was going on. And again, that was not the best of moments, but I had my family there. I was very fortunate. Still couldn't move. I, I, I was able to move my arm a little bit. This arm was swollen beyond belief. And uh, it's just very, very slowly, through great pain and great faith, I made it through. I made it through and started to recover like crazy, really fast. It's almost scary. But I'm here, and six years later, I'm a single dad. I'm happy, which, believe me, is a very hard fought victory just to be just to say that I'm happy that's hard won victory I came through am I gonna have to hold that no. you can hold it steady because it's gonna kick some oh yeah All right. On my end, you might just have to hang on to the gun just like on your side until I can knock this out with that hammer because it's stuck in there. Is that doable? I'll be able to hold it on my side. You're gonna be able to. And then, I'd probably set, you could probably set it in that gun rest and it'll be all right. Just have to be real careful moving. You got it. Set up that you can get it quietly and easily. Everything set up that you can get it quietly and easily. Well, we got into the stand about by around 6 30, 6 45. Um, it's 7 30 now. You've been listening to the wildlife, a couple ducks flying over, and just the birds and whatever's making them move in the woods. Haven't seen any deer yet. Hopefully when the sun starts to peak up, we'll see something. I was shot with a sniper. my right kidney, of course I'm paralyzed, but I lost my right kidney, my colon, my spleen, half my pancreas, and then they had to leave me open for so long that I've got a giant hernia on my abdomen and they're not able to reattach the, the muscles or the skin, so I'm stuck with a huge uh, hernia for the rest of my life. Um, how it happened is we were rolling into an area and we were supposed to be 
Overwatch and a possible IED site improvised explosive device. Um, and I heard a pop sound, and then there was smoke and dust in my Humvee, and I, I thought one of my guys accidentally fired their weapon off. So I was asking them, they're telling me, no, it wasn't us. So then I started thinking, maybe we had a small IED. So we continued on, we got to a spot where we could turn, you know, turn around and get set up to watch this IED site. And I stepped out of the vehicle, checked the damage, and when I turned back towards my Humvee, I heard another pop sound, and then my legs were gone. I just collapsed. I was yelling at my guys to turn me over so I could shoot back and yelling at them to stay in the vehicle. And then next thing I remember the medic started working on me and then I don't remember nothing for the next eight weeks. Um, I went to Launchstool that was there for two weeks, Launchstool, Germany. Uh, that's where I got a lot of my surgeries done. And then they flew me to Walter Reed and I spent six weeks there. And then uh, on to Seattle to do therapy or whatever. Well, we're coming up on about 8.05. Still ain't seen nothing. Uh, not quite as cold as I'd hope it would be, but uh, we'll see you for a little bit longer and just see what happens. There's like, there's no ball and socket like our leg. That front leg is just kind of Looks like some empty woods out there. Ooh. Don't as big as that spike. That's probably that six pointer. He's looking dead at us.
your noggin. I'm going up. Oh, I'm about to go over. Quit hitting me in the ass. Let me get out of the way so you don't run me over. Alright, go straight forward. I am from Maryland. I'm Puerto Rican, but my dad was in the Army, and so I was born in Massachusetts. Then my brother was born in Germany. Then my sister was born in Georgia. And when I was about nine, ten years old, my dad got stationed on Fort Meade. And from there I stayed. So I am from Maryland. That's as close as I can get to a hometown. I live in Cascade, Montana. A uh, small town, about 600 people. Uh, I love my small towns. I, I'm not a big city guy. But I, I graduated high school from a town that only had 250 people. So that's a step up. <laughs> I came across an individual, a Vietnam veteran, who was also extremely open. He talked about everything, the good, the bad, the, all that sort of stuff. And I had never met anybody else other than myself that does that. And I've been told it's a just my coping mechanism, the way I work for it. I put it all out there. There's no bottling. There's no none of that. It usually makes other people uncomfortable. But. Dealing with being in a wheelchair, uh, I still do everything I used to. Uh, I just find a, a different way to do it. That's kind of been my motto since being shot is, you know, I do everything I used to, I just do it differently. And I'll continue to do it. I, you know, I, I don't want to be one of these guys that, you know, um, poor me, you know, I don't want to be that guy. I want to be able to live life. Um, life's too short, so I don't want to be one of those guys that sits on the couch and does nothing. There's no such thing as stopping, quitting. I can't. My two daughters, they have to... The best way for them to learn is to see that no matter what obstacles come at you, as long as you keep moving, everything will be fine. It, it's not that it can be okay. It's like, no, it'll be just fine. Everything's going to come at you the way you look at it. If I wanted to quit, I'd quit. But I don't want to quit. I can't quit. I was uh, spent three years at a six ranger training battalion. Ranger creed, surrender is not a ranger word, so it's, a, it's absolutely out of the question. I keep going. I keep moving, and it's pretty amazing because I don't see it in myself. I don't see that I've done anything extraordinary. But every little thing I do, people are quite amazed, but then I asked them, what's, what's the alternative? Roll over and die? No, that's not going to happen. So I keep going. I smile. I, 
I laugh, I joke. There's a gentleman on the airplane on the way here. He's like, oh, is it okay if I squeeze in front of you? He had a seat next to me. It's like, yeah, just uh, watch out for my toes. Lewis, yeah. I'm gonna go and check the, grab the, download the memory cards real quick, and then I'm gonna be right back. So far, believe it or not, I actually like sitting and in the middle of the woods. I actually don't mind that at all. And the hunt so far, I think it's pretty good. I haven't seen anything. It's fine with me. I'll shoot something. Um, so far, it's been a little slow. Uh, we did see a decent buck this morning. Um, but you just see what come out of the brush here with the shot, so, and then, you know, tonight was, we just, they just ran out, um, so hopefully tomorrow will be a little bit better. Finished up day one of hunting, uh, didn't see anything today, uh, hopefully tomorrow will be a little better, uh, we're about to head back to the house, grab some dinner, and get ready for tomorrow. I absolutely cannot, I can't imagine my life anymore any different. It's just a part of me. It's been six years wounded in 2008. So, it's normal, my new normal. But it's taken, it's been a very long, hard road to here. Uh, those six years were not easy. Divorce was probably the worst part, the custody battle that ensued. The, the emotions, the fear of being alone, that's a big one. Uh, I, I think something everybody goes through is I, with my state now, my physical presence, it, it, is it even possible for anybody else to see me as attractive, anybody else to fall in love with me, anybody to even look at me in that manner? Uh, absolutely is. But it's hard to get through that sometimes. It's kind of hard to keep moving through that, but you have to find something that keeps you moving. My daughters were absolutely that motivation for me, and still are. Intelligent, just beautiful little girls going through life. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing. I'm, it, my Millie, my oldest daughter, ten-year-old. She's my little hero. She, when she was three years old, is when this happened to me. So when I was injured, and it was, no, I saw her before her first birth, fourth birthday. But now. Now she helps me out with Bella, the younger one, and she's been helping me out this entire time, and she... I can't understand it. I, I can understand it, but I... Oh, man. Sometimes I feel so guilty for having to put so much on her. But coming through this to be able to be completely normal is just... Baffling. It's it's amazing. But she is. She's strong, strong little girl. And nothing's gonna keep her down. <laughs> don't you know, don't give up. Um, there is there's so many things out there that you can still do. Uh, you don't have to accept the fact that you're in a wheelchair and, and, and think that you're different because you're not. You're not different. Um, you're still the same person you were, but if you, you know if you give up, then you know then then you're changing who you are. Um, so just don't give up and you know, do everything you used to.